Hello everyone, welcome back to Vermont Craft Tours. I'm Sarah Scully. It's uh, the middle of January and we've just survived one of the coldest stints um, that I've experienced since Rick and I moved back to Vermont. And so we're happy to have slightly warmer temperatures. It was uh, in the teens today, so that was nice. Um, but I hope you're warm and cozy wherever you are and planning like I am for warm weather. Uh, warm weather is when I do most of my dyeing for the year. And today I wanted to share with you a method for dyeing with beets or beetroot as our UK friends like to call it. Um, this is something that's a bit controversial in the natural dye world. Beets are not supposed to be color fast or really be a great source for dye. Um, but I'm stubborn and I like to experiment and I love the color of beets so I thought I would try um, to see if I could get an interesting color out of them and I tried two different experiments this summer so the first was that I put more tinted yarn into a jar um, with some beet peelings and left that out in the sun and while that didn't give a very consistent result, it gave some interesting results in that there were some small splodges of purple, a deep kind of royal purple um, on the yarn after a few days sitting out in the sun. And so I thought, well, if, if that's, you know, if that's a result, maybe I could replicate this on a bigger scale using a cooking method. Now I've tried uh, dying with beets in the past and I have not had good results um, the the most color I got or uh, the most intense color I got was sort of a dull gray um, it wasn't very appealing so but my neighbor grows a huge garden every year and he's very um, generous with his extras and so I took some of those extra beets um, the big kind of fibrous ones that aren't as nice to eat and just decided to go for it um, and I got some amazing results, I have to say, a deep tomato red. Um, so that tells me that um, it is possible at least to fix a color onto the yarn. Now whether this color is going to be really color fast and hold true after washing it and wearing it, um, I have yet to experiment with that. I need to make myself a small swatch or something and wear it around and see um, how that holds up over time. Um, but I will share with you the method that I use to get this intense color. Um, and again, with all of my recipes and dye experiments, I'll give you the full details on the blog, which I'll link to in the show notes here. Um, but the basic overview consisted of a couple of things that I did differently than the last time. And I think these few things really helped um, the color to stick. So the first was to use a really big ratio of raw beet material to the yarn that I was dyeing. Usually in natural dyeing I found you use you know a 2 to 1, a 3 to 1, a 5 to 1 ratio of whatever plant material you're using to the weight of the dry fiber that you're trying to dye. And of course varying that can intensify the color more or less depending on the effect you're looking at. Um, for the beets, I just decided to go whole hog. I used all the beets that I had, um, which was probably about 20 pounds of them, and that dyed about one pound of yarn. So a much more intensive ratio. Um, to get the most color out of the beets themselves, I ran them through the grating attachment on my food processor. Um, and that, of course, took a lot less time than trying to grate them or chop them up by hand. I boiled them for about an hour um, and then strained off that liquor and used that for my dye bath. Um, I also cooked the yarn in the dye bath for quite a while, probably two hours or so. Um, and at that point, I still didn't feel like any color was actually adhering to the yarn. You know, the dye bath was still really dark, and when I would pull yarn up, out of the water, um, all the color would sort of leach out of it and it would go back to being almost the color that I had put into the dye bath. So I was getting a little frustrated with that. I decided, well, acid is a good fixative. Um, I had already mordanted this yarn um, with alum as I usually do with wool, um, but I know that acid can also help bind color. 
So I said, well, what the heck? Um, let me put some acid into the dye bath and leave it overnight. So that's exactly what I did. I added some citric acid, probably got the um, pH down to about four or three and a half, so fairly acidic, and um, just let that sit overnight in the dye bath. And I was very pleasantly surprised the next day when I came to check on the yarn, the color had adhered. When I pulled it out, it was a nice deep tomato red. Um, it was very saturated. And when I rinsed the yarn, the color did not change and the, the dye bath was almost clear. Um, so that told me that the color really had bound onto the yarn. It wasn't just sort of coating the yarn like a paint, but it actually had really bit into the fibers and, and bound with it. Um, we will again see if this is also a color fast dye. I need to do some more testing with that to see. Um, but I encourage you to try this method. And um, you could dye, you know, for one skein of yarn, maybe use 10 beets or so and see, um, see if the longer cooking time and the acidic overnight rest will help. Um, it will help you get a, a good color on your yarn. So um, please give it a try. I'd love to be able to replicate this. It's something that I've been kind of interested in. Um, and we'll see what kind of results we all get as we continue more experiments. Thanks for joining me today. Again, full details are on the blog. And I'm also excited to share that our first workshop, which is coming up in May, um, our first uh, Vermont craft tour, which is gonna be fiber related, um, will feature a natural dye workshop with Tammy White of Wing and a Prayer Farm. So those details will be coming out in the next week or so, and stay tuned for that information. If you're not re already on our newsletter, you can sign up for that as well on the website, and you'll be f the first to learn about these announcements. Thanks again for joining me today, and have a great week.